You're listening to My, My Quebec, Quebec City 50 Plus Edition. Hi, my name is Ophélie Bernier. I'm a Sec 3 student at QHS, Quebec High School. This is my Quebec City podcast, and I'm here with Susan Kay. Hi, I am retired. I'm 61 years old, so yes, I took early retirement. When I was working, I had a variety of jobs all in the same company, and one of them was computer programming, which is the thing we're going to talk about today. So jumping right in, what exactly is the IT field? The IT field, IT stands for information technology, and it was everything to do with computers, programming, maintenance, technical support, all of that field. And what exactly did you do? I was originally a programmer. I wrote and maintained, as they call it, COBOL programs. And maintenance is basically anything that needs to be done to make the program work again. Because sometimes a program is written, it works fine for a while, but then you introduce a different type of data and the program doesn't work anymore. So that's the sort of thing that I did. And were you always fascinated by technology or was it something that you discovered later on in your life? I fell into it completely by accident. I actually had a knack for it, but I was working in a more clerical field. And then there was an opening for a programmer, a junior programmer. And I spoke to someone and said, what is this? And I went, well, you should take the test. You lose nothing by taking it. And apparently I did really well on the test and I was hired and they did on the job training and it was very scary, but interesting. And yeah, that's how I got into it. And as a worker in the IT field, what was your initial reaction to the Y2K problem? We knew about it ahead of time because people in the field were talking about it well in advance when it started to be a big thing in the media and the public was getting alarmed and going, oh my God, all the computers are going to crash and I won't be able to get my money and it's the end of the world because it's the year 2000 and really got kind of bent out of shape. But within the field, as is often the case, you know what's coming and you're trying to plan for it. For us, I think our reaction was just, ugh, this is going to be so much extra work. What exactly was the Y2K problem? What it boiled down to was that computers stored dates as two digits for the day, two digits for the month, and two digits for the year. When you're saying, okay, you had $500 in your bank account on 31-12-99, and it is now 010100, you have no money. Because 99 is a later date as far as the computer understands it. That was the root of the whole problem. And I saw that some people actually thought it would be the end of the world. People were buying a bunch of water, canned foods for survival. Yep. So did that actually happen? They were frightened of it, yes. Um, the reason being, I guess, they weren't as comfortable with te technology, so they didn't know the impact. Um, I remember my grandfather asking me at one point, You work with computers, you must know this. Well, microwaves, they have a little microchip in them. Why aren't people worried about what microwaves are going to do for Y2K? And I went, okay. And first of all, it was neat to hear the gap in understanding. And I, he was like 92 at the time, so he was allowed to not get it. And I said, oh, right. I said, Grandpa, the date doesn't matter to your microwave. It doesn't care what day it is. High remains high. Two minutes remains two minutes. It's going to work just fine. It's only things that are doing any sort of calculation based on a year that are going to get confused, and that's not going to work. Do you remember the first piece of technology that was invented? Was it ENIAC? Was that the first, first computer? The first one I remember touching my life was the Commodore 64, which is kind of scary. Is it that, what, 64K? It was ridiculous. We've got cell phones that are light years ahead of what was cutting edge technology because that was the first computer like device. I hate to even call it a computer, although it was, that ordinary people could have in their home and fiddle with and write teeny tiny programs on. That was a big step. And I was probably 19, 20 when it came out. So That was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. I feel lucky to have been young at that time because I saw the whole transition 
when I went to school, I started as a secretary and we were going, oh, we're so lucky we type on electric typewriters instead of the old manual ones. And you look at how people type now and they would go, oh my God, you were working with a dinosaur. No, they were the advanced ones that had a built-in correction tape. So all you had to do is hit a special key and it would go back and correct your mistake. Even that was so exciting. And when you think of all the things that have happened since then, I'm going, wow, that was quite a ride seeing all of it and whatever I'm going to see in the next however many decades I have left. Yeah. And technology is moving at such like a fast rate. We're in a technological revolution right now. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other thoughts about that? Do you think it's a good thing? What are like the ups and downs of it? It's hard to say. There are a lot of things that are a lot easier. Um, I marvel at the fact, for example, that you can sit in a restaurant and look at your cell phone and go, oh, my parking time's almost up. You call up the app, you insert more money via your cell phone without ever getting off your duff in the seat at the restaurant. That's great. It saves so much running around. But there are other things I look at and go, wow, really? This is what we consider a better quality of life? Because, you know, I know, we all know, we burn a lot of time staring at a screen that is such dead time. It gives us no real social advantage, no intellectual advantage. It's just killing time in its worst way. And I find that hard to watch. That and definitely... The current generation, I look at them, and an astounding number are really, literally addicted to their cell phones. They cannot put them down and leave them for even 15 minutes. And that's scary because I go, it's a thing. You don't need to. But I see that it's become part of society. And then I feel really old. <laughs> and what's something that you think technology took away from our generation? Something that you had during your childhood that we don't have right now? I don't know if we can blame technology, but kids don't seem to go outside and just play. I look at it and I think, this is crazy. We used to just go outside and do stupid stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. And it's a lot more structured. And I'm not saying it's not interesting. I love computer games. But it's a little discouraging. When I think of my childhood, I remember... We had a field at the end of our row. We were on a dead-end street, and we'd just go hang out in the field and play in the trees, and the smells and the sounds are a vivid part of my childhood, and it's beautiful. And I think, what are the sounds and smells of somebody who's 10 years old now? When we're young, we never think grown-ups know anything, so I wouldn't really try to give too much advice, but I would push to vary it. You know, don't go from a computer game to your phone. It's kind of the same thing. Do something different. Shake it up a lot, as much as you can. I'm Ophélie Bernier, and thank you so much for your time, Susan. Thank you. Feel free to listen to any other episodes on the My Quebec City podcast channel.